216, 217, 218, 326, 327, 328, 409, 410, 411. Oh, hi. I'm counting pomegranate seeds. Supposedly, there are 613 seeds in every pomegranate, and that's supposed to correspond with 613 rules in the Hebrew Bible. So, I've been counting seeds, and now I'm lost. Ugh. One, two... Forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven. Pomegranates were mentioned quite a bit in the Bible and were really important in first century Jewish culture. And Shoshana knows a lot about that, so let's go talk to her while I keep counting. Where was I? Oh, shalom, my friends. Welcome. Uh, my name is Shoshana, and I was just counting pomegranate seeds. Uh, that might seem a bit strange, but there's a reason. Uh, I'll explain it to you. You see, the pomegranate is a fruit that grows all throughout Israel, primarily in the south, in Judea, but also in the north, in Galilee, where my village is. It looks like this. It's a large, round fruit. It has a sort of a flower on top. And this flower has five points. We call it the crown of Torah because it looks like a small crown on the pomegranate. And there are five points on the crown, just like there are five books of the Torah. Now, if you don't know what the Torah is, it's a collection of writings, of books given to us by Moses, one of our ancestors. People today call them Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Perhaps you know this. Well, actually, in the scroll of Deuteronomy, God promised us that the pomegranate would be one of the seven plant-based foods we would find in the promised land once we got there. The others are dates or honey, figs, wheat, barley, grapes, and olives, all of which grow in my hometown of Nazareth. Now, the pomegranate is very hard on the outside, but once you open it up, there are many, many sweet seeds on the inside. Some people say there are as many seeds as there are commandments in the Torah. That's 613, and that's why I was just trying to count. I've never actually done it before, but I can do that later. I tell my children that the seeds represent God's many blessings to us. So as we eat the pomegranate seeds, we count the many blessings of God. A good practice for us all, no? Now, the pomegranate is spoken of many times throughout the Torah uh, and in all of our sacred writings. You see, Solomon uses the pomegranate to describe love and beauty. Uh, God commands that the outside of the temple be decorated with pomegranates, the curtain in the temple, the priest's garments. Um, pomegranates are painted on our walls. They're etched into our oil lamps. They're carved into wood as decoration. You see, some people believe that it represents fertility and overall it represents God's blessing to us. It's very, very delicious. But it's not just delicious, it's very useful as well. You see, we can use the seeds to dye wool. Different colors, dark red, uh, dark pink. I can use the flower to dye things like my belt, this light pink color. And we can use the rind on the inside to dye white wool, orange. Very, very beautiful. So it's very useful, it's very symbolic, and it's a wonderful treat to have on Shabbat or Day of Rest and also at special times of the year, like during festivals, Rosh Hashanah perhaps. So, the next time you eat a pomegranate, which I encourage you to do, make sure that you count all of your blessings as you do so. Shalom, my friends. If you like what you've been seeing on our Lonely Curator videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.